Hey everybody, it's Brian. Welcome to the 31st Flutter tutorial. We are going to be looking at the switch, which is very similar to the checkbox or the radio button even, in the fact that it has an on or off. Um, it's graphically different because it switches back and forth. Think of it like a light switch. It's just an easier way of letting the user know what is going on here. So typically you would use this for like a setting of some kind. You know, like do you want to give feedback, yes or no, turn it on or off kind of thing. So. We're just going to dive right in here and we're going to say import package, import material, make our main function here. And then let's we're gonna extend the stateful widget. And then we're going to Extend the state of that state for widget. And you notice I've kind of deviated a little bit. I say underscore state instead of my app state, just so it's a little easier to understand what's going on under the hood. I had some questions about the difference between the two. And remember in Dart, anything that starts with an underscore is private. So that's not accessible outside here. So we're going to say run app. Gonna make a new material app. We're gonna set the home to new my app. And here we're going to just simply override this and we're gonna say screwed that one all up. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial. I took a little break over the holidays, so now I'm going to fat finger just everything. There we go. And then here we're going to say override. All right, so pretty simple design pattern we've got going on here. We have our main function, which creates a new material app through the run app, and that's what's going to actually run. Uh, we have our state full widget, which is going to hold a state. The state of that is going to be called by create state. And here's the actual state. Now in the state, we're going to call the build function, which remember whenever we build quotey fingers, we're going to actually render something on the screen. So we're going to return new scaffold. And this is where the real meat of the program comes into play. I'm going to say app bar. Yeah, fat fingered that. We're just going to say switch demo. And in the body, we're going to say new container. And we're going to have some padding in here. And then we're going to have an array of widgets inside of a column here. And in here, we're just going to make a new switch. And you see how it has a value and an on change. So automatically, it wants to know, hey, what's going on here? So with that, you should understand that we got to actually set some things here. So let's say bool value equal false. That's our initial value. And then we're going to say void. Uh, let's Then we're going to set the state here. Now in set state, we're going to actually set the value. So we're going to say value equals the value. Pretty simple. So we get our initial value here. And then the unchanged, we're going to say Maybe. 
maybe if I could actually type. All right, so then we're going to say on changed value. So then we're going to just simply set the value here. So if you've kind of skipped the previous 30 tutorials, basically what's going on here is we have a private variable called value that we're holding in the state. When the slider, or I'm sorry, when the switch is actually changed, it's calling this on change using the value of the current value of the control, whether it's on or off. Shoving that into this function here, as you can see, we're calling it there, and we're setting the state. That's very important to call set state, because if you don't do that, well, the state is not saved. And then when the screen's refreshed, nothing happens. Or I should say, if you don't call set state, the screen never refreshes. That's actually more accurate here. And the initial value, or the value that's bound to it, is this underscore value. So we have this private variable here. So let's go ahead and fire this up, run this on our emulator here. Had a lot of positive feedback about the Flutter tutorials. I'm actually pretty happy to see that. Um, I was kind of wondering when I first started these how how many people would actually even be interested in it. And it turns out quite a bit of you guys actually are. I was really shocked. Uh, for such a new technology, especially in alpha, I mean, it's not even in beta yet. It's still in alpha. There is just a humongous amount of feedback on this. All right, so here's our little switch. You can see we turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. And it follows the design pattern very similar to what we've seen previously with checkboxes and things of that nature. So with that, we're also going to check out the, you guess it, the switch list title. Has the same signature here. So we're just gonna copy and paste this. And we're gonna break this down a little bit more. Whoops. Screwed that all up. I'm so embarrassed. All right, there we go. So with this, we're going to actually add in a few little things here. We're going to say a title. Now, someone did ask, um, with titles, you're saying new text. Why wouldn't you just put in quotes? Because it's actually expecting a widget. So for the title, you can put anything you want. You can put another switch, you can put a checkbox, you can put an image, you can put a custom control, anything. I'm just putting a text in there because it's very easy to do that. All right, so we have our title. Let's set the active color equal, we're gonna say colors dot red. And for secondary, we're going to say Just a home icon here. You notice how off to the left it actually previews it a little bit. We're going to rerun this bad boy. And now we have our switch. And because they have the same value that they're bound to, it doesn't matter which one that we click. The difference being this, you would have to add like extra text or whatever. Well, this is all one control. So you can even click on the little house here and it turns it on or off. So that's it. Simple, easy to use. Um, if you found this tutorial educational or even funny, let me know. Uh, be sure to visit my website, voidrooms.com. Click on tutorials for the source code for this and all other tutorials. It takes you right out to GitHub. And note that uh, this website and everything that you're watching is 100% funded by your donations. That's why I don't have advertisements on the videos. So if you are a corporation or if you've just got some extra money, be sure to you know feel free to donate. Uh, a lot of that times that goes towards funding the website, running the host, and all that stuff. So thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.